All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a Saturday afternoon, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's March 30th. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Uh, whenever you watch this, uh, as you can tell, I'm in my backyard. It is an absolutely beautiful day here in the Middle Tennessee area. And so uh, if you have a prayer request or a testimony, go ahead and put it in the comment section. Would love to uh, also see where you're watching from. Type that in. Uh, and uh, do that, Patty Ann. Good to see you on here. And we prayed for you this morning at our prayer meeting at Covenant Church. And so uh, we, were pr we prayed for you, Patty. So we just want to let you know. And so we're going to pray together in just a minute for all the needs, the physical, the spiritual, financial, the emotional, uh, for our nation, for Israel. And so, but I want to share with you just a word that the Lord's laid upon my heart just to encourage you today as it's this Easter weekend and uh, that we focus on this. But, you know, an awesome thing, I think, uh, as a child of God, is that we don't have to wait till Easter to focus on the death and the resurrection of Jesus. In reality, as we as children of God, we live that life. We live the crucified and resurrected life every single day of our life. And so... Paul brings this out, I mean, in particular, I mean, Jesus did, and it's carried out throughout the whole of the New Testament, but I want to read to you Romans chapter 8, verse 11, and, and get this. He said, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. You see, as a, children of, as a child of God, we have the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of us. And I love the way that Paul put it here. He said, it's the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Get that for a moment. Again, it's the same Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is a person. He lives on, in, inside of us. And Paul said it. He used that word dwell two times in Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. Two times he said, if, the, if that spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Good to see you, Elias. Dwells in you. And the word dwell means live. He makes us his home. So if the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, he said he will also give life to, your, to our mortal bodies through that same spirit who dwells in us. Now, often Romans chapter 11, uh, whenever it is read, it is often viewed as just simply pointing to the coming resurrection, physical resurrection that, we, that every child of God uh, is going to experience at some point in the future. For us uh, who are alive and remain, Paul said, it's gonna, we call that the rapture, first Corinthians chapter, sorry, first Thessalonians chapter four. It's the rapture, it's the resurrection. And and this mortal body is gonna be changed into that which is immortal. Now some put Romans chapter eleven and limit it to that experience. And now it definitely does apply to that. But you know, when Paul wrote this. In the context, it lets us know that it's not just referring to the future resurrection, maybe even more so, it's referring to right now, right now. And he said that that spirit, that resurrection power lives inside of you and I and gives life to our mortal body. And I want to encourage you today that you as a child of God, and I'm assuming today, those that watch this now or later, and I know it's a busy weekend, so some might not even watch this till next week or whenever they do, but the same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, lives in you. And I wanna encourage you to that. This, this, this mortal body is decaying. Paul said that in 2 Corinthians chapter four, in verse 16, he said that though this outward man perish, that's our mortal body, though this outward man perish, our inward man is being renewed day by day. And so this mortal body, uh, when he said there, it gives life to our mortal body. It doesn't mean that that all of a sudden, you know, we, be, we receive a resurrected body now. No, 
but he's meaning that though this mortal body is decaying, it's aging, it's getting old, and uh, I'm, I'm turned 51 last Wednesday, and this past Wednesday, and uh, my the 50-year-old version of myself is not even the 40-year-old version of myself. Definitely not the 30-year-old version or the 20-year-old version. This mortal body is decaying, but even with a mortal body that is decaying and growing old, Paul said there is life flowing through us. And I want to encourage you with that today, that you've got resurrection life flowing through you today. Well, I don't feel it, some say. I, I, I won't believe it till I feel it or I see it. And sometimes we can take that same approach that Doubting Thomas took to Jesus and to the disciples, I should say, that I won't, and really to Jesus, I won't believe him until I see him. Sometimes we could take that same approach to this truth, this great truth that resurrection power lives within us. Well, I won't believe it until I feel it. And sometimes we're waiting for uh, a powerful church service or a powerful time in prayer before we realize, oh man, there's resurrection power in me. But even when you don't feel it, there is resurrection power flowing through you. You know why? It's because your dead spirit has been made alive. Hallelujah. Again, I want to tell you, your dead spirit has been made alive. And that in itself, it, it it, it's, I mean, it's common sense. When we read the word, we take the word for itself. But it, you know what? We need, we need the Holy Spirit to make that real to us. Because again, it's, we, we often go by what we see, feel, and hear in the natural. If I feel it, then, oh, then I, <laughs> then I know. But no, no. Even when you don't feel it, know and believe because his word says it that our dead spirit has been made alive. We've been risen with Christ. And, and though our mortal body is decaying, we've been raised with Christ. Our spirit is alive. We just need to know that and dwell on that truth and live that truth every single day of our life. Praise the Lord. And I want to encourage you with that today. On this, again, this resurrection weekend, there is resurrection power that lives in every single one of us as children of God. Just believe it, know it, and practice that. Live that out every day of my life. And how do we do that? By knowing and believing and, and identifying with it. What's his is mine. Hallelujah. Just as the Holy Spirit through Paul said. And so I want to pray today and uh, with you. And go ahead and press the thumbs up and or love button on this uh, Facebook or share it on the Cornell Ministries YouTube channel. Subscribe to that, even if you don't watch it, subscribe to the Cornell Ministries YouTube channel just for it to get out. And uh, again, we wanna pray and pray for the physical needs first of all. So let, and I, when we do this, again, I encourage you to pray with me. Let, this, this is meant to be a participation thing, not simply an observation thing. And if you hear lawnmowers in the background, it's because people are, my neighbors are mowing the lawn again. It's a beautiful day here. But I want to pray now for the physical need. If you have, if you have a physical need in your body, well, no matter what it is, again, you have resurrection power flowing through you in the name of Jesus. And you don't need a preacher to lay hands on you. There's nothing wrong with that. That's scriptural. But you don't, you're not dependent upon someone coming and physically laying their hand on you. If you look to Jesus, if we, as we look to Jesus, his resurrection power and healing power can flow to you right where you are, anywhere you are around the world. So let's pray right now. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I lift up, Lord, everyone who's watching this now or later, that God, your, your healing virtue would flow through them from head to toe in the name of Jesus. I thank, we thank you, Lord, that you defeated every infirmity. You defeated every sickness of the mind, of the brain, of the physical body, Lord, whether it's kidneys or, or liver or skin disease or, uh, Lord, heart issues or brain issues. God, we believe you for healing right now to flow in the name of Jesus. And I take authority over every 
power of the enemy right now in Jesus' name over every spirit of infirmity, over every cancer, over every tumor, tumor, over every blockage. I command it to be let go and released. Let the blood flow right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Let your healing blood, your healing virtue flow right now in Jesus' name. And we believe it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to pray now for the spiritual and mental. Well, you know what? The, the mental, first of all, because they're both connected. But, you know, sometimes believers can be, we can know the truth. We can know uh, the cross for our everyday living, but still live in torment because we've got divided faith. We, and, and, and when I say that, I'm not putting anyone down. I, I'm preaching to myself. We can have divided faith. We have faith in Jesus. We have faith in what he accomplished for us at the cross. But we're still holding on to some fear. And that fear, as the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, 18, it brings torment. And today I want to take authority over every power of the enemy in regards to the mental, the mind. Because we need mental healing today. Especially in the world in which we're being bombarded. So... Let's pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I lift up every person or who's watching this now or later, that, Lord, they would have torment in the mind, whether it's a physical or spiritual or both. I pray, God, for healing and deliverance in the mind in the name of Jesus, that those hindrances, that fear that's been holding your people back, Lord, that that fear would be exposed. And Lord, if, if, if there is a spirit of fear, we take authority over it in the name of Jesus. And we bring every thought into captivity to your obedience, Jesus. Lord, every thought, we bring it into your, into your obedience. Hallelujah. And Lord, we pray that strongholds of the enemy in the mind, strongholds of lies, would be replaced with strongholds of truth in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. And I take authority over every power of the enemy. And I thank you, Lord, for healing virtue to flow through the mind. Let your peace, you said, would guard our heart and our mind through Jesus Christ. And we believe it. We receive you right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to pray now for the spiritual and uh, for revelation knowledge uh, of Jesus and all that he's accomplished for us I, and his love that he has for us. I truly believe that if we... If we were to see the great sacrifice of Jesus in a greater degree, see his love that he poured out for us, see where justice, his justice met his love at the cross and love and mercy triumphed over judgment, the Bible says. His love triumphed over justice and Jesus took what we rightfully deserve. And I'll pray for revelation knowledge to come forth as Paul prayed in uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Father, right now, I lift up all those who are watching, Lord, myself included. And God, we ask you that you would have mercy on us, that you would have your grace would be poured out. And that, Lord, during this time where we, of course, celebrate your resurrection, your death and resurrection, Lord, we pray for revelation knowledge of all that you've accomplished for us in the name of Jesus, that it would go beyond the head, but we would see it, Lord, where the eyes of our understanding would be open, as Paul prayed in Ephesians 1, that we would understand to a greater degree all that you've done for us, that we would have a revelation of your love like never before, a revelation of your victory, a revelation of the price that was paid, a revelation that we could walk in every single day of our life, Lord. Hallelujah. For, Lord, you don't give us revelation to argue with people. You give us revelation to change our life. And, Lord, let there be revelation knowledge that comes forth to your people of you, Jesus, of your word and what you've accomplished for us. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to pray for our country and for Israel. And uh, I want to pray for that because there's a spirit of, of, there's an antichrist spirit that's increasing in our world, in our country, really around the world. But I want to pray that, uh, that, and lately in the last month, I, my prayer has been, Lord, will you expose the lies, expose the corruption that's in our country, that's, that's operating in society. And God can do it as a precursor to a great move of God, to, as a precursor to 
souls being saved. God can expose lies. And so let's pray. Father, right now we lift up our country. And I thank you, Lord, for this great country of the USA. And Lord, others that are watching around the world. And God, I thank you, Lord. We thank you that you've given us freedom. Freedom to do even right now what we're doing. And Lord, we pray for a great move of your Holy Spirit in this country. That Lord, you would would would. Uh, Lord, reveal that you would shine the light in dark places, Lord. The dark hearts, Lord, that have been, that have been, uh, uh, that have, uh, that has accepted the lies of the enemy. We pray that you would expose corruption, that you would expose the lies of the enemy to individuals and to the masses, oh God. Expose it, we pray in Jesus' name. But more than anything, expose the lie of the enemy that Jesus that you're not the Messiah because, Jesus, you are the Messiah. You're the Savior. You are Lord. And we ask you, Lord, that there would be a great move of your Holy Spirit in this country and around the world for many souls to be saved and that that your church, Lord, the body of Christ, that we would return to our first love, that our faith would be anchored in your word and in who you are and what you've done, Jesus. God, we pray for a great move. We pray for our leaders. We pray for wisdom for guidance, for direction, for righteousness to reign in our country. And Lord, that more than anything, that they would know you, Jesus. Lord, there's nothing too hard for you. We pray for our leaders that it would, again, expose corruption, stop it, and let light shine on people's heart. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to pray for Israel. And uh, Father, right now we lift up Israel. And I thank you, Lord, that you're blessed. You have blessed the nation of Israel. Lord, being there, God, it's a miracle country. It's a, mir- it's a Lazarus nation. Because, Lord, you brought Israel back from the dead. And, Lord, it's a type of resurrection. And, Lord, we pray for Israel right now and their blessing, their protection, that you would give them victory in this current conflict, that the, the, that the hostages would be released, that, Lord, more than anything, that there would be revival in Israel, that you'd raise up, Lord, Jews right in Israel, that would be bold and, and Lord, have a voice in their society that would listen, Lord, that, that, that would have authority just as you did, Jesus, Lord, 2,000 years ago. And let there be a revival in Israel before the rapture, O oh Lord. And we say it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, this on this, again, this resurrection weekend, I want to remind you, as Paul wrote again in Romans 8, 11, But the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. And if you're a child of God, the Holy Ghost dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. And again, that's more than just referring to the resurrection of the future. It does apply to that. But it's right now. Our mortal bodies decaying, but there is resurrection power flowing through us. He's made your dead spirit alive. Hallelujah. Just know that, believe that, and live with that truth every single day. And let it be, let it stir up praise in you. Lord, I thank you that I once was dead, but now I'm alive. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, God bless you and have a wonderful day in Jesus.